Good evening. Thank you very much for joining us tonight on the holiday or the independence holiday for the year 2022. I do hope that you enjoyed your independence celebration and you monitored uh, the presidency and, of course, the government on what is in store for us moving forward as a country. You're welcome to the show tonight. And tonight we are talking about the benchmark values, the reduction in it, and um, the reactions from the major stakeholders. Uh, so we'll be hearing from the Ghana Union of Traders Association, we'll be hearing from um, people at the ports, importers and exporters, and how this is going to affect them. So you want to stick and stay with us tonight. It's going to be a very exciting discussion. Issues of e-levy will come up. Issues about the exchange rate will come up. Issues about the fabric of the economy of the country will come up tonight for discussion. My name is Kwasi Efriye, of course. I am your host for The Bottom Line. On The Bottom Line, we say business at the speed of thought, and we are coming your way live from our studios here at Ridge in Accra. Remember that we are live on DSTV channel 277. We are live on our Facebook page, Chairman Kwasi Efriye, and we are live on Metro TV news page. If you want to tweet at us, you can tweet at us at Kwesi Efriye on Twitter, on Instagram. You can get to us also at Kwesi Efriye. Stick and stay with us. We will be right back. Right, so you welcome back from the break. I explained to you earlier on that uh, tonight we are talking about the benchmark values. And I would read just a bit of um, what's been happening so far to you so that um, you can run along with us. So um, this one says, government has reduced the benchmark values on general goods from 50% to 30%, as well as import discounts on vehicles from 30% to 10%. The reduction follows, of course, a consensus between the finance minister, uh, Honorable Ken Oforiata, and major stakeholders of the industries, including the Association of Ghana Industries, including the Ghana Union of Traders Association, including freight forwarders, and the Ghana Revenue Authority. Of course, Ministry of Finance and Ghana Revenue Authority on one hand as um, a bit of the government, and um, freight forwarders, and uh, Guta and AGI as a private um, associations that were speaking for the business sector. And it's been gathered that consultative meeting um, that the government may implement. It is expected that implementation will happen this month, as in March 2022. We are told that this has been met with um, uh, reactions from sectors of the economy, especially those who are interested in the case. And tonight, let me introduce to you that we would have in the studio Mr. Vincent Ayete Odonko, who is the national organizer of the Ghana Automobile Dealers Association. And um, currently on Zoom is the president of the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Dr. Joseph Obin. In fact, Dr. Joseph Obin is currently in Kumasi. He would have joined us in the studio. He is regular with us all the time when we invite him into the studio. So when he has the time, he doesn't miss coming here. And uh, we're always grateful to him. When we call on him, he avails himself to make sure he explains um, the nitty gritties of everything that we require to the public and to his association as well. So he is joining us live on Zoom. And if he's live, I'm sure we'll begin with him right away. Dr. Good evening, and thank you very much for joining us, if you can hear me. Good evening, sir. I hope you are doing very well. By God's grace, we are okay. Uh, we thank God. We thank God. So um, the, the issue about benchmarks has been long running, and um, tonight we are back at it again. And I, unfortunately, I'm told you are in Kumasi, so you have to join us via Zoom. But we are so happy we can have you to talk to you, because I think on this matter, you are... Um, arguably the most authoritative person to speak to on, on this very issue. I will start it this way. For 
those of us who may be watching for the first time or who may be listening to you for the first time, what does this mean, benchmark value, when we talk about benchmark values? Yeah, um, the benchmark value is actually um, an imported uh, uh, word, the benchmark. But um, what it is actually is invoice discounting. Mm -hmm. But because um, your invoice is also benchmarked by values that um, customs have on their data. That's why um, um, the term benchmark value scheme, because whatever your invoice value is, um, customs have the right to uh, make sure that it has the um, it is authenticated mm -hmm. by using their benchmark values. And that's why it, it, it got advocated to um, benchmark um, value. Otherwise, it's invoice discounting uh, policy. Right. So yeah. who, who discounts it? Is it government that discounts the invoice for you? Does government make some of the payments on, on behalf of the traders? Or how does this work? Exactly. Um, if you recall, some time back, um, the major problem of the trading community was um, high uh, duty rates. Mm -hmm. And that's what every business was um, uh, talking about, uh, cost of doing business being high and all that. It came to a time that it had become very unbearable. As a matter of fact, the duties that we were paying were among the highest in the whole world. Mm -hmm. And so we petitioned through the Council of State and um, um, we, 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 we had engagement with government. We, we sat down, put out the figures down, and government realized that, indeed, um, what we were paying was extremely high. Um, um, what we were paying then, um, we know we have um, a, a goods due table of 20% and others due table 35%. Mm -hmm. Those that are 20%, you have to cumulatively pay 55% of your invoice value as way of duties and um, VAT and other levies. Mm -hmm. And then um, those, um, that is 35%, you accumulate to 65%. It means, therefore, that when you import goods, a uh, value of $100,000, mm -hmm. you have to go and fund $65,000 to go and pay duties, wow. and VAT and other levies. 65000 Wow. And so... Uh, uh, Yes, and that is the truth. And so, um, um, but that, that's that's that's. Uh, I mean, before you go on, you you go on on that very point. But that's a very great disincentive for for importers. Yes, and even the whole business community, because um, um, the manufacturers also have um, um, this concession also. Mm -hmm. So the concession when it came, it was being enjoyed by um, the importer importing community as well as the. Uh, manufacturing and uh, manufacturers also and then the end effect also goes to the final consumer so it was not something that was affecting only the importer as you may see mm -hmm. so the rippling effects transcended to all um, aspects of um, um, the, um, the um, business life yeah and so um, government um, saw to the plight of the business community and said that, okay, there were challenges with the uh, reducing the uh, duty rates. In fact, that was what we were demanding, that the rate of duty should come down. Yes. But government was challenged because of the CET, a common external tariff. Mm -hmm. And they opted that because uh, they are challenged to reduce the duty rate because of the ECOWAS protocol, then they opted for the uh, invoice discounting. So it was um, government-owned initiative um, that brought the in, uh, invoice discounting to um, serve as a mitigating factor um, to bring some respite for the uh, community or business community in general. So, so I, this is how I the, I, I followed I followed um, your petition to the Council of States at the time, and I have followed all the proceedings. But um, we still want to graduate gradually. Into, into the issues that we have currently. So that's how come I've taken you back a bit to be asking you all about these details. Why was it difficult for government to reduce import duties because of an ECOWAS protocol? Yeah, they have common external tariffs. Um, the common external tariff uh, determines that 
um, the ECOWAS member states have common um, tariffs. That, um, but then there was an opportunity of the state also to argue. But we know that much as these um, tariffs were being imposed on us, um, uh, countries like Cote d'Ivoire were able to bargain on some of these um, this thing. But nonetheless, that was um, for the government to do. It was not for me to do. Mm -hmm. But they were challenged because of the um, um, the ECOWAS protocol on the common external tariff. And that's the argument that they brought forth. But it was, it was, it was, for duty reduction. It was, it was obvious that government uh, didn't have the will to do or they didn't put up the will to, to do something about it because other governments um, had done something about it in the same ECOWAS space. I, I, I know they could have put because there were um, they, 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 uh, they, were, they had the opportunity to um, uh, present some items that is very essential for their, their country, member countries. Mm -hmm. So they could have argued on certain items and then um, it could have been um, granted them. But whatever it is, this is the um, solution that they opted for, that the invoice discounting. So if we can dwell on that. Uh, so this, this invoice discounting, it was an international practice and government adopted same? Um, yeah, you see, um, every country have gotten the right under the um, WTO and all that um, to, um, to adopt a method that will help the citizenry if it is not going against the WTO laws. So um, this is how, because uh, if it was in, uh, in contradiction to the ECOWAS protocol or the WTO, you know that um, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't have hesitated to sanction Ghana. So once they did not do that, it means that it was a legitimate way um, that the government opted. And um, it, it truly, it came to help the, 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 uh, uh, the business community as well as the consuming public um, who then were not surcharged with high um, duty rates and uh, we are able to minimize um, the, uh, the duties. And uh, uh, one thing that also uh, we learned from this is that the compliance level of the duty payments went up to the extent that even when the, uh, 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 we have been given this discount of 50%, mm -hmm. uh, government exceeded all its revenue targets from uh, the 2019 um, to 2021. It meant, it meant uh, people could now import more. You say? I'm saying it meant people could now import more into the country. Uh, exactly. That's one. And then another being that compliance level uh, um, is high. Because then, you, uh, let me give you one scenario. You know, before um, before the benchmark, uh, before the invoice discounting policy, or what it, it has come to be uh, called benchmark um, uh, value reduction, uh, you, you used to see so many um, um, cars imported into the country uh, with the um, uh, Togo numbers. Togo numbers, uh, yes, uh, I remember clearly. Numbers, uh, foreign numbers. You, uh, have you realized that you hardly see those ones again? Yes. You hardly see them in town. It's because first people were just smuggling them through those um, 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 ports into Ghana and then uh, registered them as if it is ECOWAS car. You know, if you bring the ECOWAS car here, you have 90 days and you can go back, re-register and enter. And so people who were bringing expensive cars and all that were using that. But now you hardly see that. It means that then a bulk of them were bringing the car uh, uh, straight through the Tema port, paid legitimate duties, and then it shore up the government revenue. Um, rice importation in Cote d'Ivoire Mm -hmm. Before the introduction of the benchmark reduction policy, mm -hmm. was one point uh, was one point five uh, million uh, metric tons. But when uh, we introduced the benchmark policy, it came to one million metric tons. What does that mean? It means that uh, about five hundred thousand metric tons of rice were being um, smuggled through the Western Corridor. Wow! Uh, wow! Into Ghana. Mm -hmm. And so it came to help. And then government was also able to shore up its revenue um, collection, which it, it, it is very obvious. Um, if you read 
um, the budget statement and all that from 20, 2019 to date, we have been exceeding our um, revenue target, which is a, a, a very good um, um, indicator. However, I mean, you have clearly shown that this was the way to go. We had had a lot of um, fights uh, before now about its suspension and its being kept and so on and so forth. Finally, it's been reduced from the 50% which you were working with now to about 30%. And there are different reactions for, for, for your outfit. How do you take this? Yeah, you know... Um, um, we have um, pleaded with government that the mark reduction or the invoice, uh, invoice discounting policy came to solve a problem. And so the reversal of, of same means that we are taking us back to the problem. And that um, AGI were lobbying that uh, government should take it off and that it has made imported goods cheaper than um, the local manufactured ones. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so um, this, this was the argument. We have argued that um, the benchmark has nothing to do with the pricing of AGI, and that um, 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 what they are saying is not even true. It has no bearing. And um, when we, we put up the argument, government also um, uh, thought that, yes, we have a case, a, a, a genuine case. That's why it was suspended in the first uh, 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 the first time it was being introduced mm -hmm. for us to have a uh, broader stakeholder engagement, and uh, after that we uh, we went with the engage uh, to the engagement with open mind and very objective, knowing that um, Ghana a uh, government have to um, um, be compensated. Government need resources to develop the country, so we have to open up for them to shore up its revenue collection. And then AGI need also need to be compensated, and we the, uh, the um, um, importing community also cannot be overburdened with um, um, uh, the duty high rate of duty because then a 50 percent uh, reversal would have meant that the duties that we were paying were going to be doubled, and it was going to uh, cause a great harm to us. You know, even at this present this dispensation. Uh, a lot more people are having their goods um, auctioned by the state because they cannot even pay. So um, the benchmark reduction policy that came to uh, mitigate the plight of the consuming public did not come and take away the duty. The duty was still very there and very high at the same time. It only reduced some cost for us. So how then can it uh, does it come against uh, in the, uh, uh, manufacturing? Um, uh, and manufacturing. Yes. Sir. And uh, we have argued that government have given them concessions. Um, they have over forty percent leverage over rest. They do. Uh, whilst we are paying over sixty five percent duties, the one that I calculated for you, they are paying uh, uh, less than five percent. And then whilst we pay the VAT, and then it's being taken by government. Their VAT that we were paying were given back to them. The duties that we pay every time embedded in these duties is our um, 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 an added fund that is also given to support um, manufacturing companies and exporters. So the concessions are there. Why are they not taking advantage of the concessions? And then the little respite that has been given to um, traders is what they want to take it away for do, them do, to be do, do you think? It do you think? Do you think that this is all about profit for members of the AGI and maybe some of your members as well? Because prices are still high, even with the benchmark in place. I remember clearly that um, um, I imported a car some time back. And then after, I think around 2019, the same car with um, the same brand, the same everything, was less about 30% or so uh, the cost of how much it was imported previously. However, let me come to the uh, actual question I want to ask. Prices are still high. Benchmark is coming. AGI is enjoying it, which means that if everybody enjoys it, cost of production is going to go down, prices will go down, and the end consumer, like myself, will enjoy some respite. So why is it difficult for AGI to be able to accept this? And uh, again... The point even is that they are not even able to produce enough 
if, if they are producing enough, we will not have any reason to buy what you are importing. Yeah. So um, that's why I normally say that AGI does not even um, know what is militating against their own industry. <laughs> and most times, we have to be talking on their behalf. Yes. The fact that it is militating against industry is not the concession, the little concession that government have given in terms of duty payment to us. Why are they not competitive? Why do they not benchmark their, um, their prices with the FOB prices of their counterparts um, in other countries? That's, that's the pain. And um, why, if they are not competitive, the reason is um, cost of utility, um, that's um, um, electricity, water, um, uh, fuel, and all these things. Lack of modern machinery that can turn efe efficient production and cost-effective production for them. Um, um, access to, um, they, they don't have access to cheap capital. Their capital is being um, um, costed at over 20%, where whilst others are having their um, capital at less than 2%. So these are the factors that they have to enumerate and then um, um, uh, pressure or lobby government for government to look at, not this thing. So they don't, uh, they are confused. And then they will say that, like you said, that um, prices were high. No, we're, 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 after benefiting from this uh, benchmark, prices could have been higher. You know, the factors of costing is not only the benchmark, by the exchange rate and all that. So the car that we were talking about meant that um, you could have paid higher without the benchmark policy. Hello. That's all that it son of Ghana. So Ghana's I'm, longest I, I'm coming back to the studio before I come back you to you. But let me, let me pick this question from Joel Krampa. He says, uh, the AGI says the total reversal will help save local industries as cheap imports has been made um, attractive, which you have answered already. But um, how then will we grow made in Ghana, by made in Ghana, when importation has been made profitable for businesses? What is the choice of the Ghanaian? It's a choice. Ghanaians have the right. Normally, I've heard most Ghanaians when um, a, a sympathize AGI. Mm. But having this sympathy does not translate into buying the goods of um, AGI. If they buy the goods of AGI, it means that we do not have the demand um, to import um, from outside. So um, the, the problem is AGI is handing um, a high cost to the consuming public for which they cannot contain. So what they have to do is to make sure that they produce at a competitive price. If you say industrialization, it does not mean we have to overprice in uh, the produce of industrialization. You'll be opted out. It means a, a work done is zero. It means that you cannot sell your goods to competing countries. So industrialization comes that you do it at a competitive pricing where uh, 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 your own country, uh, uh, your own citizens can patronize as well as citizens from other countries can patronize. But their price is way too high. But having said that, there are so many um, uh, companies that have also done due diligence as well, who have done um, uh, feasibility as well, and they are producing in Ghana, and their prices are very cost-effective, very competitive. So, and so, we are buying so much mm -hmm. from this um, group of people, like biscuits, like plastic items, like um, uh, pharmaceutical items, like there's some uh, ceramic, uh, the tiles, four tiles that we are producing. So it is never true. It's not wholly true. There are so many manufacturing companies that they are doing extremely well that they are, uh, it is not even uh, attractive for us to go outside to go and bring uh, those goods that is being produced here. And these are the areas that we have to look. Those areas that we have the comparative advantage is what we have to give all the maximum support. Because when we say that we are producing, or we want to industrialize. It does not mean that we can produce everything in the world. No, it's never done. Uh, because now countries are uh, uh, interdependent and that we fall on the strength of others. So where we have our strength is where we have to uh, dwell on. 
and then make sure that uh, where we have comparative advantage, we give all our resources so that those products become a hub of production in Ghana so that, uh, people it will attract people to come and buy. And we also buy the goods that we don't have comparative advantage from elsewhere. That's how uh, these things are done. But you, do, you don't say that because I want to industrialize. So those things that I do not have the advantage, I'm forcing it on the truth of the Ghanaian. It, is, it, will, it will not be done, and nobody will patronize that. Right. So uh, I'll come back to you. The, the discussion is getting interesting on that point, because Joel again says you are reselling and promoting other economies, uh, goods from other economies, and you are expanding their economic base and living. No, Ghana. but so I, I, I'll, let's I'll come. Turn it. Let's turn it. Why are they not consuming the produce of Ghana? If Ghana people, <laughs> like the person who is talking, consume the produce in Ghana, it does not. It doesn't make attraction for me to buy from outside. So let's produce what is made in Ghana, if, regardless of the price. If we do that, we don't. We don't have any option than to uh, patronize for what is made in Ghana. But you've given us the uh, the, the demand, the choice to bring for you. So the onus lies on the people of Ghana. Nobody should uh, put the blame on the importer. We are business people. And then your demand is what we supply. Right. Right. So, uh, kindly hold on for me there. I have, I have, I have Vincent Odonko here in the studio. Um, Vincent, you are welcome. Thank Vincent you. is the um, national organizer for Ghana Automobile Dealers Association. And we are talking about the benchmark values. And I was just citing an example of a, a vehicle which was imported some time ago. And um, due to the benchmark values, we saw some reduction. Prices are still going high, but we now have the 30% reduction for you. Um, I think for even vehicles, discounted by 10%. Um, how are you taking this? Is it good news for you? Good evening to your viewers, and then uh, to you, Mr. John Ludono uh, of Ghana Police Service, who is at the forensic unit. Um, my brother, it's uh, bad news for us. Bad news? Yes, because you see, this um, benchmark value um, came about when this current government came into power, and then they realized that um, the cost of doing duty mm -hmm. at the Ghana port was high. So, um, Dr. Baumia, I think, went to one of the neighboring countries to do a survey. Yes. And then after that, um, they realized that, yes, we were complaining bitterly that duties were high. So they came about uh, with uh, this uh, benchmark value. Mm -hmm. And already when you import um, goods, um, by law, when you import a used car, um, we were enjoying some discounts already. So they also brought in this 30% uh, mm -hmm. on cars and then 50% on um, general goods. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> now they've come back telling us that they are reversing um, the 50% the and then the 30%. But <laughs> we are on the benchmark value but honestly sometimes i get disappointed in some of my leaders mm -hmm. especially i would not say especially i mean mr uh, joseph for being he's my big brother he's one of in them Guta. he's speaking on behalf of Guta. yes he's online he's, he's yes. watching you now you see sometimes the way they speak when we are outside is different from the way they speak when we meet um the government officials and then what have you. Mm -hmm. And you see, sometimes it is like the account says, um, yeah, per asem, sur asem. Mm -hmm. When we are outside, it's like we talk back, 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 back. But when we meet them, then it is like, yes, So what mm -hmm. has been the case? Mr. Obi Udruhua went to me in Kasa, but on the outside here, he's defending government. Uh, or or which, which is the case? Uh, yes, that is, that is what I want to say. Because see, he, ha he hasn't defended government here. Yes. He has made his case that 
it doesn't, it, uh, his case is not supportive of government, and it, also, it is also not attacking government. So which one of his cases are you not in favor of? You see, the government is making um, things unfavorable for the business community. You wanted the 50 and the 30%. I mean, they, they have given it to us. Mm -hmm. So why are they not allowing us to enjoy this? Because already this uh, dollar and then euro, I mean, the foreign currency issue mm -hmm. is killing our business. Mm -hmm. So if now you are telling us that you are reversing this um, benchmark value, it means you are totally killing our business. Because already, already, you were engaging us, I mean, we were dialoguing, I mean, with the government. Mm -hmm. But I think the last meeting we had was with the finance minister. <laughs> then the, um, the, the GRE was telling us there that uh, from 1st March, yes. they are taking that 30% benchmark we were enjoying from us. To 10% now? Yes. Meanwhile, we were dialoguing. We've not come to conclusion. You see, so it is like they wanted Ghana to, um, they wanted the whole of Ghana to see them as um, a good governing body. Mm -hmm. But that, that was not what we were seeing because we were dialoguing. So why do you, I mean, at that meeting, then Jump you said, to, first match, we are reversing. And they didn't take your, your concerns. They didn't take your no. reactions. No, no, no. All that we told them. Within the, within the meeting. We, we told them that, look, the dollar, the currency is not helping our business. And you see, my, 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 um, what I'm seeing with this current government is this. Mm. Because they are or they've misused um, um, our natural resources and what have you. Mm. Now, the only hope and the only place they can get their revenue is through taxation, imports and... is through taxation mm. and then the ports. But meanwhile, there are other <laughs> avenues where we can get taxes. And this is where you should sit down. What do you think? Um, we can get, uh, because honestly, without tax, yes, we can't we can run, run the economy. We can't run the economy. You understand? But it shouldn't be like the moment you sit down, oh no, now we have nowhere to go. Let's go to the port. And as I was saying, already our businesses are going down because of the, the depreciation in the uh, so, Ghana city and then what have you. So honestly, now it is like I see this, um, like this government is kicking us out of business. Because now- but You are going to pass the cost on to consumers. If you are now to pay a duty of going back to what uh, Prof, um, uh, doctor, doctor was saying earlier, mm -hmm. that you used to pay about 65% on, on, on the things you were importing. And the benchmark came in, which reduced the percentage. Now, if benchmark has been reduced to 10%, you will still pass it back on to the consumer. So you are not taken out of business. The, the, the problem is, you see... But things are going to be very high anyway. When, when you do that, you are, over, you are overburdening, um, you overburdening the Ghana... Um, Customers. Yes. Because this is what I'm saying. Already, things are tough. My brother, you are here. I mean, you can testify. Mm. So what we were saying is that at least, whilst we are um, into dialogue with them, they should give us some time. Because the issue is this. My brother, you've loaded your container, mm -hmm. which is coming. Mm -hmm. Then you are taking a loan, or you've prepared for that container, mm -hmm. like um, you've put in 100,000 in your account, waiting for that container to come. Then now, this reverser, with this reverser, it means that you have to go in for additional money. And if you have no 
uh, 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 any other means to get that money. What happens? Then it means the car comes, and then they seize your cars, and then auction them. At lower, lower prices? Yes. Which is not even up to the duty you are paying. Look, I have a Toyota Camry 2011 mm -hmm. right now. It was brought by a friend who is in New Jersey. And he was telling me if I can clear the car. And I was asking, when I clear the car at that price, how much am I going to sell it? So now he says the car should be there for the government to auction it. Because, look, I have the document here. He's paying 53000 No, sorry, 50000 I think 300 and something. As duty? Yes. On the Toyota Corolla 2011. Toyota Camry. Camry 2011. Yes, as 50, a result of the reversal. Yes, as a result of uh, the reversal of the benchmark value. So you see where this thing is taking us to. So with me, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, honestly, uh, I'm seeing the current government as our own enemy. Instead of uh, they helping us. Because uh, what we were saying is that at least um, let's come into an agreement. Okay, fine. You are saying you are giving us a uh, twenty percent. Okay, then let's give us like some three months or four months for it to um, take effect. Mm. But we are in a meeting. We've not even um, because uh, the meeting did not end because we are uh, 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 still to go and then come back with the various. Uh, the, the trade ministry was mm -hmm. one of the body that we were meeting. Then. Right there, then you're telling us first March this thing is taking effect. So let me go to uh, uh, Prof. Um, if you can hear me, is this exactly what happened at the, at the last meeting? Um, did the GRE bulldoze its way through um, instead of allowing you to go back and come back with your options for them? Uh, are you talking to me? Uh, yes, I'm talking to you, uh, Doc. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, we had had um, engagement. First, we, we met with the finance minister. All stakeholders were there, mm -hmm. including um, Automobile Dealers Association. And that was when the, um, the, the suspension came. Because, uh, mind you, the government have started um, um, implementation and we have to put a, a fierce um, um, a fight against it, and it was reversed. And the first meeting, all of us were, 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 were with the um, finance minister, and all of us made our input. And so um, when it was suspended, we said that we do further engagement. And then um, with the further engagement, we went to, all of us went to Alisa Hotel again, including um, the automobile dealers, their leadership, Korea importers, all of them. And we all discussed. And then the last one was when we went to the finance ministry where all the um, stakeholders have been met with and then uh, they were coming to um, give um, um, the new um, discount um, for us. And uh, you see, in negotiations, what I, I, I've learned is that um, you cannot have it all because there, there was a, a full reversal of the 50% and we fought. And other uh, uh, business um, uh, associates or other uh, uh, stakeholders were also fighting against the same policy and we cannot have it all. So try as we did. And we, we did our best. I'm surprised that my, my brother is not um, appreciative of um, the efforts that we do, sometimes it's hurting. Because I, I do every, the benchmark, how did it um, come in the first place? I have to personally uh, write to Council of State to petition. And that's why we saw the 50% in the first place. And so if they say some, some, some things like this, it, it becomes very discouraging. But then we, we've done our best by in negotiations. We cannot have it all. Uh, what uh, 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 happened was that government wanted to uh, satisfy AGI. Um, government also wanted to show up its revenue collection. And then at the same time, wanted to also um, satisfy the trading co uh, community as well as the consuming public. And um, if he had been in, in those meetings, even the one with the finance minister, 
he saw that if you ask anybody, I spoke for well over two and a half hours. And the room was so quiet, very passionate. And so please, um, you shouldn't um, get the impression that uh, we come and talk on air and then when we go, go, go and if the ministers hear this, they are going to laugh because they know <laughs> how powerful I am when it comes to bargaining. Mm. <laughs> they are going to laugh. <laughs> this guy, they are saying that uh, he is something on this. No, uh, my brother, please, if that's what you've gotten, ask your leader who were uh, with this. I did my best. As a matter of fact, even behind the scenes, I was trying to get about 20% for the um, the car dealers. And I, I've, I, I use the example that I gave, that they don't, they don't um, see the registered, uh, the Togo uh, registration cars, mm -hmm. the uh, Benin mm -hmm. registration mm -hmm. car, Nigeria, um, uh, to push a, a very strong case for the automobile dealers. But we can't have it all. And that's what we were able to have. So, and so Doc, please... Let, let, let me ask you um, this one. You agree, as um, Vincent Odonko had said, that the exchange rate is affecting your business so, so much. So before I come to him, I want you to answer this. E-Levy has also come up, and uh, this is not a time to have reversed the benchmark, but to allow it to operate for maybe some three months. Which one? Exchange rate, the dollar rate, the, uh, the depreciation of the city is very, very much high now. Yeah, it's very bad. Um, in fact, depreciation simply means loss of capital. And I, um, as I'm speaking, I'm releasing a press, I'm making a press release this evening. And um, it's having a toll on us, serious toll on, on businesses that if care is not taken, or our capital is being spirited away. Depreciation simply means loss of capital. And um, it's very difficult for us because we use the same um, um, exchange rate uh, as the benchmark, the dollar as the benchmark for duty calculation. So whilst it's going up like this, it means that duty is going up. The benchmark value um, has also uh, been reduced from 50% to 30%. It means that now on general goods, we are going to, instead of uh, uh, the fifty percent we are uh, we have we have to contend with thirty percent. Right. Uh, what it means is that if your value, um, your goods that you are claiming is hundred thousand uh, uh, dollars, the 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 former the the uh, the present one you have to pay seventy thousand. On uh, you have to pay seventy thousand uh, dollars. That's what. By former you should have paid fifty thousand uh, uh, duties of fifty thousand only. Now right. you have to pay duty on. 70,000. Right. Yeah. Right. And so, so your duty is going to go up, and then the, um, you are using the same um, 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 dollar as a, a benchmark to calculate the duty, while the uh, duty um, rates have also gone up because of the benchmark reduction. So we are, we are in tough times, seriously. Doc, I'll come back to you, but let me come to the uh, studio pretty shortly. And uh, our time is almost rounding up, but I'll come back to you to round up before uh, we leave the studio. Doc says he has been fighting for you. And in fact, he had given that example earlier, um, uh, that now we don't see too many of the Togo registered cars like we used to do. And so he has been fighting. And so those things are going to come back. <laughs> yes, because you see, when, when um, the, we started enjoying this uh, benchmark mm -hmm. value, um, we stopped seeing those things in town because even Ghanaians go to Togo, bring the car, and then I think after three months or six months, they go back, renew the document, and then come and use the cars here. And then you see them driving those cars on our roads, and then um, you think they are Togo leads, but they are Ghanaians. Mm. Uh -huh. And now uh, that thing is going to come back because now people <laughs> are not going to, um, people will not be able to buy um, these cars. I mean, Dr. Obin was saying that um, uh, he was good at uh, within the negotiation or something. Mm -hmm. But you see, even in Ghana here, I think even when somebody stays in your room and then you are injecting the person or something, you give some three months uh, period for the person to, 
I mean, uh, find another room or something. So what I was saying is that, even if you are reversing this benchmark value. Take your time. We were saying they should take their time. Let's study the grounds very well. Because, you see, they should also consider us. Look, my brother, um, where to get taxes are many. Look, let me, let me just bring in this thing. You see these Okada riders. Sometimes you see lawyers, big men, when they are going to court, they are late. You see, they will just park their car somewhere. <laughs> Traffic. Yes, and then take Okada. Mm. So why can't they legalize Okada? And then it tax is... Them. Tax them. My brother, look at the number of Okadas in Ghana here. You see, there are a whole lot of... Um, ways and means. Ways, I mean, so many places they can get... Um, they are, they are taxes, but they are not doing it. And as I was saying, the only place they think that they get their taxes is the port. And by so doing, I mean, they are killing us. You see, if Mr. Obin is saying that uh, I'm not appreciating um, what he's done, no. You see, when we go there, we, we, we put them into power. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we should also let them hear our plea. They shouldn't, they shouldn't, like, it shouldn't be like uh, um, um, they, are, they are being, um, um, it is like they are saying that is final. What no. They, whatever they say is final. Yes, so it's final. No, point, it point has been well made. I, I want to ask you one question. Okay. Um, one, uh, in 30 seconds. Okay. What has happened to the salvage cars policy? What's your discussion with the government so far? They are, bringing, been, they, 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 they are bringing in some measures. Um, which you like. Not really, not really, but I think some of them is not bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, let's see what happens, because they are bringing it to the public to uh, what we've discussed indoors. They are mm -hmm. bringing it out for the public to also... Uh, Ponder over it. Yes, so that uh, we take it from there. So right. I think, yeah, with that, it's not bad. Right. Yeah. And then the E-Levy 2, you, you've heard about it, you know it, um, uh, you accept it as an association. Is it going to affect you? Uh, with the e levy, we are telling them, but still they want to bring it. So if they okay. should bring it, I'm sure you'll be listening to <laughs> they said your, your final comments, and um, you you may want to pass a comment on the e levy as well, and then uh, the salvage cars. But um, all in 30 seconds, our time is up. Uh, producer is yeah. on my neck, then we can round up. My my issue uh, on e levy is very simple, uh, because we have been um, talking about the new norm, the e commerce. Mm -hmm. That has come to take over the traditional way of doing business. And most of these people are not paying taxes. So while the traditional businesses are paying taxes, most of these e-commerce um, online businesses were not paying. And so we have been fighting that this thing, um, um, they, they are taxed. But uh, for the e-levy and then the uh, talk tax and these things, anything that um, um, seeks to expand the because if the tax net is not widened enough, all that it means is that everything is going to be uh, compounded on uh, importation. And that's why um, anything that seems to be expanding the tax net. But as to whether the rate is affordable, that's the pain. Because the taxes, if they are um, 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 affordable, compliance level become very high. If maybe they have come with a, a very negligible uh, tax rate, People might not even have been talking the way they are talking. So, um, uh, expanding the tax net is very good, but as to the rate, and then... How we go the about it as a country. The, uh, exactly. And then the yield levy, one thing is that if we, we can do enough education to let us know the double taxation aspect of it, that maybe if you use it for your sales and all that, you can uh, redeem it when filing your tax. Right. These things can be understood and then we give it a, 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 a green light. Right, um, thank you very much. Otherwise, expanding the task net is not a bad thing to do. At right, all. right. Point well made. Thank you very much. Dr. Joseph Obin is the president of the Ghana Union of Traders Association. He joined us via Zoom. And I'm sure you followed the discussion and, in fact, the final comment on E-Levy that it is good, but the double taxation bit and the education bit for people to understand. And Vincent Ayete Odonko is the organizer for the Ghana Automobile Dealers Association. He is of the view that government should have engaged them more before the reversal of the uh, benchmark values. However, 
we will move on as a country. They will continue to engage government. My name is Kose Free, and I was your host for The Bottom Line. Have a very good evening. Thank you very much for watching.